At his residence in Salisbury, Sir Edgar Whitehead presented awards to two boys whom he had judged to have kept the best logs on the recent scout exploration trip in search of a lost city in the Kalahari Desert. Of the 29 boys who made the trip in January, the best log was made by 17-year-old senior scout Brian Haddon of Salisbury. The other award went to 17-year-old John Murray of Bulawayo. And the prizes for their efforts, what else but books on adventure and exploration. This is Tet, the 400-year-old Portuguese fortress on the Zambezi River near the Rhodesian border, where a team of canoeists from the Federation's army were visited by the Parliamentary Secretary to the Ministry of Defence, Mr. Sidney Sawyer, and a group of journalists and cameramen. The Portuguese authorities have given every assistance to the canoeists, who will have many tales to tell about being attacked by hippos and stalked by 16-foot crocodiles. The reception at the Tet Hotel was a welcome break from 300 miles of paddling. Lieutenant Casey de Monti, a Canadian, was in charge of the party of six men and two canoes on this first adventure training exercise designed to test initiative, endurance and character. And here's the first autograph on the expedition's flag. From beer and skittles, it's back to dehydrated vegetables and bully beef and whatever they can shoot for the pot. The two canoes were joined together catamaran style some way back up the river to give the craft more stability in the treacherous rapids and strong headwinds. The party didn't fancy capsizing, there was too large a welcoming committee waiting with gently smiling jaws. After 300 miles and 11 days of paddling from Chirundu, the verdict was, we wouldn't have missed it for the worlds. It's tough, but great. And so it's off once again to their destination at the river mouth near Chindi. Only another 400 miles to go. The Chamber of Mines Athletics meeting at Bulawayo's White City Stadium saw competition between the South African Mines team Wenala, the Copper Belt, Southern Odisha and the BSAP. Mr. Cyril Hattie opened the meeting. The cycling events brought a thrilling win for Odishan champion Young in his only race, the mile, with in second place Reggie of Wanky, who chalked up victories in the half and three mile events. The team placings in the cycling events were Machonaland first, with South African Mines second, five points behind. Here comes a thrilling final sprint from Reggie to win him the half mile. Here's the start of the 120 yards hurdles. Watch Madassa from South Africa and Reggie taking the hurdles exactly neck and neck. Still together over the last hurdle, but a final burst takes the event for South Africa in 15.9 seconds. The start of the one mile. Big disappointment of a meeting at which times were not impressive was the failure of the Federation's two Empire Games distance probables, Lovemore and Lot, although Sariwa showed some of his old form coming second in the three-mile event. Selsedi won the mile easily to help the Wenela team finish in first place with Southern Odisha Mine second and Matabililand third. Inspector Clark of the Northern Odisha Police demonstrates the equipment which will be used soon in radar speed traps in the north to prevent road accidents at known black spots. The radar unit operates on the principle that a radio beam, when reflected from a moving target, undergoes a frequency shift proportional to the speed of the target. Hmm. For example, when a train approaches you, its whistle note seems to get higher and then drops as it goes away from you. Let us examine the effect of this machine as Mr. Roadhog comes tearing down a 30 miles per hour road. 
The machine reads the frequency shift caused by the speed and translates it into miles per hour. See, accurate to within two miles an hour. And of course, the inevitable result. Now then, where's the fire? What's all this speeding? 40 miles an hour. Me, officer? No, not me. Never traveled over 25 in my life. Look, there's my speedometer to prove it. Hmm, better tell that to the magistrate. One of Radisha's oldest schools, Plumtree, this year celebrates its Diamond Jubilee. Founded, so the story goes, for the benefit of the railway inspector's nine children, represented by nine plums or marulas on the badge, the school now has four modern hostels, the oldest, Milner House, having been rebuilt in the late 30s. But these pole and dagger huts were Plumtree School in 1902, when a school council was formed with the approval and assistance of Cecil John Rhodes. These huts are still in use as quarters for bachelor members of the staff. In 1913, the girls' side of the school was abolished and it's remained a purely boys' school ever since. In 1914, Plumtree was taken over by the government. Among the thousands of names carved on Plumtree's desks is that of science master Clarence. Many old pernicians, as the old boys proudly call themselves, returned to teach at their old school. Many an embryo engineer has received his first insight into the mysteries of his profession in this laboratory from physics master Barrett during his 36 years at the school. For the technically minded, there's a well-equipped woodwork shop. But the arts are well catered for too. Not only here, but also in the music department and in Plumtree's celebrated theatrical productions. And who ever heard of a schoolboy who wasn't hungry? There are no waiters, and meals always begin and end with grace spoken by a senior prefect. The common room is a haven of refuge for harassed masters, and peace usually reigns in the well-stocked reference and lending library. Plumtree is justifiably proud of its academic record, but the importance of recreation and fresh air is never forgotten. Many old pernicians now wear the Rhodesian colors for hockey, cricket and rugby. Oops, import parade for that young man. This fine non-denominational chapel in 1941 replaced the old ramshackle building which had served as a place of worship for many years. In 60 years, Plumtree has had only five headmasters, Mr. Lobb following the almost legendary R.W. Hammond, Milne, Rolfe and Patterson. Plumtree's record in two world wars is second to none. And the honors boards contain many famous names, Tony Pithy, Bob Kennedy and Noel Escort, capped for England, David Lewis, O'Connell Jones, Jeff Elman Brown, T.G. Gisborne and Air Vice Marshal Bentley. The scholars of today raise their hats as they pass through the memorial gates for the 92 old boys who helped to build the traditions that make Plumtree School 